Hey there guys, welcome back to Fallout 4. I just want to do a quick overview video of the new Wasteland Workshop DLC and just uh, a few of the things, well pretty much all of the things that have been added by it, just in case people are wondering. It's about 1am here in the UK, so I think America hasn't actually got this DLC yet, so I'm just uh, I'm just trying to get this video out nice and quickly. It might not be super organised, but it should basically show you everything that's in it. Um, the main thing that's been added is the new concrete structure. Um, so you've got concrete floors. This is a kind of... Uh, I think... I think this is just another concrete floor, but there is one that you can... Yeah, there you go. There's one that you can actually see through, which is quite cool. Um, there's also an actual foundation, which is this one here. So you can put that down on uneven ground. Um, here are the two, well that's the main type of concrete wall. And then there's also the uh, doorway here. There's concrete staircase, new type of door. You can also see through, which is quite cool. Um, there's all these new types of railings, which just kind of go down on their own, but there's also uh, this, this kind of crossed type of railing that you can kind of put along um, bits of flooring like this if you want to perhaps make a bridge or something. Uh, it's also added in a new curved floor which I thought would make a pretty cool bridge and it's also got these uh, these weird like half half floor pieces I'm not sure how to describe them but yeah there's probably something useful you can do with that. Not sure if this door has been added in or not, or if it was already there, but yeah, that's uh, that's also another option. I don't think that door was in the original version of the game, either way. Um, there's also these new railed staircases, which I have to say look pretty good. Like, they look a lot better than the, uh, the wooden staircase that we've been forced to rely on so far in the game. Up here we have the different types of concrete roof. There's uh, a kind of half see-through one there, if you want to uh, make a kind of cage design. And then here's the more conventional flat concrete roof. Another thing the DLCs have added, that this DLC has added, is uh, these buses, which you can actually build in if you want to build in. They're a bit awkward to build in. I've tried putting down a bed in one of them and it was kind of hard to line it up properly, but yeah, you can, uh, you can have your settlers live in there if you want. Um, there's also this type. You can now build these. Um, I don't know if the settlers can walk into these or not, but I realise that you can kind of make it so that they can if you go here and then uh, put some staircase kind of lined up to it. It doesn't go perfectly, but it's good enough. I think that should be okay. And I assume that they'll be, yeah, they should be absolutely fine with the pathfinding, just walking up like that. That works quite well. And uh, there's a third type of bus, which is this one here. Again, you can pretty much do the same thing with that. In terms of new walls, there's also this uh, this nice window mesh wall, which I think is the most see-through wall we've had so far. And then there's uh, this one here, which is kind of like a more conventional window design. Uh, it also brings in this new half wall, which is quite cool because, um, yeah, this should make things a bit more adaptable, basically. And if you want to go really, really adaptable, there are these new uh, pillars, I guess they're called. But you can actually you can actually put them together in pretty much whatever shape you like. So if you want to make some really weird designs of your walls or something, you can actually do that now. These can kind of go in any direction. Uh, there are also these long angled walls, which kind of connect together in slightly unusual ways. So it's probably quite a lot of interesting things you can do with that. And uh, here we have... Uh, same again, angled wall, except with uh, a doorway on it. And finally, we have the curved concrete wall. Another thing that's been added are these new uh, powered doors, which basically you connect power to them. You need, a, you need an on and off switch in order to open and close them, but they basically go like this. That one's a kind of elevator door. There are lots of different colours of these. I think there's also a blue one and maybe a white one. So, there's a few different ones of those. This is a, a wooden design one if you have a, a wooden wall that you want to use instead. And it opens and closes in the same way. Just use the switch. Should be useful for the arena, I think, if you're going to make an arena. 
In terms of new decorations, the main thing that's been added are a hell of a lot of new uh, mounted creature heads, which you'll need a lot of different um, meats and things for. First things first, we have the bloat fly head. I'm actually going to go into this mode just so we can identify all of them. Mounted bloat fly head. Mounted blood bug. Mounted cat head that I think is really fucked up, but <laughs> if if that suits your taste, that's fine. Mounted death call head. This thing looks really cool, and I'm I'm really surprised this one wasn't actually in the base game, but it is in it now, so that's good. I think you need. Uh, I'll actually. Just have a quick check what you need for these. Yeah, so you need a death claw hide for that one. Um, they're all kind of predictable. You basically need the corresponding type of meat. You have the mounted dog head, mounted feral ghoul head, uh, mounted glowing one head, and I think for that one you need a glowing blood pack. Uh, mounted gorilla head. And you can actually, you might be wondering if you can actually find gorillas, and there is actually a gorilla cage added by this DLC. I'm not really sure how that fits in with the lore, but like you can, you can find more synthetic gorilla meat if you want to. Uh, mounted hound head, mounted hunter head, the Mylurk, Mylurk king head, mongrel head, these all just require normal Mylurk meat by the way. Um, with the exception of this one, this is uh, the Mylurk Queen Claw, which is definitely the biggest available uh, wall mount creature. And for that you need uh, My Queen Mylurk meat. Uh, they've also added in a bunch of these new signs and things, which I think are meant to go on containers, since obviously they're probably a bit too small to fit on uh, like shops, if you want to do like a shop sign or something. And uh, you can basically make these say whatever you want. There are a few of these just kind of put in for convenience, but um, you can also kind of put them in whatever order you like if you want to make your own. There's also the mounted rad roach, mounted rad scorpion, which looks a bit weird, but if you can kind of see it from underneath, you'll see that that's actually its head. It's kind of hard to tell. Uh, mounted stingwing, and finally mounted yao guai. Another thing that's been added is the new garden plot, which is quite useful if you want to um, basically grow plants wherever you like. You can, for example, make a, a rooftop garden with this, which is pretty cool. It makes things a lot more adaptable. You need a fertilizer for that, which you can buy from various vendors in shipments and things, and I think you can also get them from having Brahmins in your settlement. It's also added in the new powered water pump, which is pretty cool because uh, if, you, if you don't have a natural water source in your settlement like this, uh, it's previously been pretty difficult to get a nice amount of water coming in, you've had to just build shitloads of taps basically, but you can now build this powered water pump that uh, it sounds a bit like a generator and it produces 10 water instead of the usual 3 for the usual uh, tap. Another new thing that's been added is the decontamination arch, which you probably already saw in the trailer, but if you haven't seen that basically you press the button, you walk through and you get decontaminated. A really big new addition is the fusion generator, which you need uh, four levels of the science perk in order to build, so this is a very much a late game power source. And this thing provides a hundred power, so it's far more powerful than any other power generator. You don't actually need a fusion core to build this. You can turn it on and off. You don't actually need a fusion core to build this, um, but you do need a lot of other resources, so it's very much a late game power generator. The new defenses, there's uh, this spinning blade thing here, which just kind of keeps going on its own as long as you've got power. It shouldn't it shouldn't ever break, which is quite nice, because uh, the thing that's always put me off with the traps in this game is the fact that they all kind of break once they've been used. And there are a few still like that, but um, there are also quite a few new additions that just work on their own, which is quite nice. There's the uh, spike trap here, which basically sets down like a concrete foundation. Jump on it, and it comes up like that. Not sure how much damage it does. There's the spring trap here, which if someone steps on the pressure plate, it'll hit them. Again, I don't think this one breaks after use. Um, there's an alternative uh, electrical powered one, if you don't want to use the simple one for some reason. But um, yeah, you step on that, it goes in like that. Pretty good. Another new thing is the trapdoor, which is quite useful. Again, this doesn't require any power, 
Uh, it kind of connects to um, wood flooring in the usual way. And when someone steps on that, they basically fall through. So you could potentially use those railings I mentioned earlier just to kind of like lure raiders or something onto the trap door and then they'll fall through there. I'm honestly not sure if this is a new one or not. I, I don't actually recognize it, but it's it's a radiation trap. So um, this is kind of a conventional trap once you power it up it basically sends off radiation probably not something I'll ever use but um, yeah I'm not even sure if this is in the DLC or not but uh, yeah I'll just mention it either way moving on now to the new types of lighting added by the game there are actually loads of new lights added by the game these are the conventional street lamps which you've probably seen around the wasteland you can now build them in your settlements if you want. Another thing that's really cool is they've added a whole bunch of these new uh, ambient lights which don't require any power so if you just want a simple way to get a bit of extra light in there's candles, campfire, lantern, uh, not sure what to call this, cage light <laughs> and finally this thing and these are, these are really nice looking you just need oil for that it's not powered by electricity and it, it looks really classy. There's also these two uh, wall-mounted candle lights here, and uh, just going to mention this: you can now build a cat bowl, and I think that works a bit like the doghouse in that if you capture a cat, they'll all kind of like gather around here in the same way that Brahmins will gather around the uh, feeding bathtub thing. There's a few uh, floor-based lights added, so these are pretty cool if you want to um, shine a bit of light on a sign or something. Those would work quite nicely. Uh, there's also the Nixie tube, which I think you can change using a terminal if you want to display a different number. I'm not entirely sure what the full function of that is, but um, should be quite useful. And there's a whole bunch of new uh, wall lights, which I'll go through now. There's this one that kind of sticks off the side a bit, just to open up the menu so that I can get the name. Cage wall light, there's the traffic light, just a standard wall light here and a more uh, horizontal one here fancy wall light you can get them in either sets of two or singular neon letters again you can kind of just stitch these all together um, in whatever order you like so depending on what you want to spell out there's a uh, I think one two th three four five six I think there's seven different colors available it's white red orange yellow green blue and then there's also purple there's the subway light the open sign, which I think just cycles through, just uh, trying not to, like that basically. Uh, there's these new string lights, which you can kind of use to connect different ceilings and things together and just kind of string them together if you want to make a kind of, I don't know, fest festival atmosphere or something. There's the new type of ceiling light here. Fluorescent light, these are, I think these are just in the base game, but you can now build them in your settlements as well. Again, uh, you've got these kind of spotlights, they either come in sets of one, or you can put these uh, five sets on. There's also, um, I'm not actually remembered to put it on, but there's also a cycling light. Which might not be here. Yeah, there's also this cycling light, which... I think if you connect it to a terminal you can uh, use a bunch of different colours for that and uh, make it so that they go through various colours. Also there are a couple of table lamps added now. I don't think there are actually any table lamps in the base game but you do now have two options, the blue lamp and the yellow lamp. Going to be moving on now to the cages section, which is very much its own beast. It's uh, it's kind of like this arena setup thing where you can capture all kinds of different creatures. Uh, you can tame them, make them fight each other, make them fight your settlers, and various other things. I'll just go on to the explanation here. Should be one coming up in just a sec. So yeah, there's a cat cage for which you need the soft shell Mylurk meat. 
and here's an explanation, cages let you capture a variety of creatures and enemies. Cages will only work when powered, they have a chance to catch something while you sleep or when you're away from your settlement. You will usually catch something within a week or less. I have tested this for I think a 24 hour period and it didn't catch anything. Uh, I tested quite a few different cages, I don't think 24 hours is long enough, but if you wait a week you should pretty much capture something pretty much guaranteed in one of your cages. Once you've caught something in your cage, you can release it whenever you want by cutting power to the cage. The cage will also open if it's damaged. Note that keeping captured creatures and enemies will increase the chance your settlement will be attacked. Um, so for example, I think the way that works is if you put down a raider cage or a gunner cage and you successfully capture someone, I think that increases the chance that you'll be attacked by raiders or gunners. And obviously it goes all the way through, so if you, for example, uh, put down a deathclaw cage, I think there's a chance you'll be attacked by deathclaws. Um, I'm not sure if it stacks, but if it does stack and you for some reason want to be attacked, you can uh, put down a whole bunch of deathclaw cages or something and you should be soon attacked by a whole bunch of deathclaws. Some captured enemies are always tame, some are hostile unless you have a beta wave emitter turned on when the creature is released. Captured raiders, gunners and super mutants are always hostile. Cages are split into three categories, there's small cages, medium cages and large cages, they all work the same way. Um, basically you have... The way the cages work is you you build them using a resource that basically works as bait, so for example, uh, the Deathclaw cage you actually need Yaogwai meat, um, and for the Yaogwai cage I think you need Radstag meat, and there's a kind of food chain going on there, so you, if, I think the idea is you can capture a basic prey creature and then you can kill it and then it will then you can use the meat you get from it to make a slightly better cage and you know keep attracting better and bigger beasts basically so you have the mutant hound cage the mole rat cage the dog cage and the cat cage for medium cages you have the feral ghoul cage the gorilla cage I'm not sure how this works, if they just kind of show up, because, um, yeah, I don't know how that works, since obviously there's only two gorillas in the base game. Gunner Cage, this is quite funny, you need to build, um, you need to build this with caps, so they come running in to steal the money, and then they get captured. Insect Cage, I think this can catch lots of different types of insects, and by the way, the cages can trap, um, lots of different variants of each creature, so... You're not guaranteed to just get like a basic Yao Guai, you could get like an Albino Yao Guai and so on and so on. Uh, there's the Raider Cage here, for that you need six bits of jet. Super Mutant Cage, I can't remember what that needs. And then moving on to the, whoops, moving on to the large cages. There's the Rad Scorpion Cage, the Myler Cage, the Radstag Cage. Deathclaw Cage, Brahmin Cage, and Yaogwai Cage. Okay, I've powered up all my cages, so what I'm going to do now is wait for about 5 days in game time and see what we get. Another thing the DLC adds is the new arena system, which basically you can make two teams, a blue team and a red team, and uh, by assigning settlers, or if you have the automaton DLC, you can also make your robots fight each other. Uh, you assign settlers, um, and I think possibly tamed creatures as well. You can assign them to these different panels, and then when they see each other, they go and fight. Yeah, settlers assigned to this will be hostile to red team arena contestants as well as tamed captured creatures. So I don't think you can put the creatures on teams, I think they just fight them automatically as long as they're in the arena. Assign a settler to an arena platform if you want them to fight tamed creatures or the opposing arena team. Be careful though, your other settlers will be unhappy if a settler dies while assigned to an arena platform. If you want your settlers to fight each other, assign them to opposing red or blue platforms. Know that they will become hostile to each other as soon as they are assigned to the platform, so you may need to keep them out of sight of each other until you're ready for them to fight, for instance with powered gates. So yeah, there's the blue team, the red team, 
And then uh, over here we have the Beta Wave Emitter, for which you will need the Animal Friend and Wasteland Whisperer perk. I think you need to have level 10 Charisma for the Wasteland Whisperer perk. So that's a serious commitment, and that's pretty hard to do. Uh, you also have the Quitting Time Siren, which I'm not sure if you can use this immediately. If you can, then it would probably be a hell of a lot easier to arrange your battles, but um, this should, I assume, stop your people from fighting each other if you want to stop them before they all kill each other. Right, and when this thing goes off, it basically sounds like this. Okay, we're now going to go and look at the cages and see what we've caught. We've successfully caught, it's been about five in game days, we've caught a mutant hound, a mole rat, we've not caught a dog, we've caught a cat, we've not caught whatever this is, we've not caught a feral ghoul yet, we've not caught a gorilla, we've caught a gunner, we've not caught an insect, we've not caught a raider, we've caught a super mutant, we've caught a rad scorpion, we've caught a mylurk, caught a rad stag, caught a death claw, and I think I just heard it growl. Yes, I can hear it growl. Caught a Brahmin, and we've not caught a Yao Guai. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch the power off, and they should all just come charging out, and just absolute havoc should ensue. Okay, here we go. Let's see what happens. Yeah, Gunner Brigadier. Wow, okay, so that's very high level. Okay, we now, apparently we do have a gorilla, so we didn't need to do anything special for that, it just kind of came out. Rabid Mole Rat, I think these things might be leveled. It's, the gorilla is friendly, apparently. Okay, so the gorillas come out friendly, which is surprising. Um, I think they come out leveled, so if you're a higher level, I think you actually end up fighting stronger creatures in the cages. Which is probably a good thing, or otherwise, when you're a low level, you get completely destroyed. So yeah, we've got Glowing Mutant Hounds. We've got a uh, Mylurk King there. Super Mutant's already dead. Mylurk Deep King, in fact. So yeah, I think that's another high level creature. Rad Scorpion Stalker. We've got a Brahmin, the Rad Stag. An Alpha Death Claw. Which I can't even see properly because <laughs> just being attacked by everything. Looks like yeah, the missile turret's going off. Things are slowly dying, the Alpha Death Claw's taking a little while to go down. Down it goes. Red Scorpion's still alive, the Brahmin's still alive. Other than that though, pretty much everything's died, so yeah. Okay, so that just about summarizes the Wasteland Workshop DLC. Hope you guys found this nice and informative. Um, I'll probably do a non-god mode arena fight soon where I'll actually try and do this stuff legitimately. So if you guys want to check that out, uh, it should be uploaded sometime in the next few days, I think. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video and I will see you next time.